Hello. I have been having issues with Instagram for the past five minutes. Or maybe my connection. I'm not sure. Guys, it's the clouds. Like, we've had rain for two weeks now. And today is two weeks. So, yeah, that's why I'm wearing black. Because I'm in mourning of the sun. I miss the sun. I miss everything about the sun. I miss running because I haven't been feeling well, so I've stopped running. How are you guys? Hi. Hello. 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 Oh, let me stop complaining about the bad weather. So today I actually decided that the month of February, I'm going to be reading from titles that, hello, hello, reading, reading glasses. Hello. Hi, Nkateko. Hello, Marina. Hey, everybody. Hey, Tuli. Hi. Happy Friday. Okay. There's something about being live and there's something about recording for YouTube. Like the energy here and the energy you see on YouTube. If you are not subscribing to my channel, by the way, please go search for Bukamusa Book Club on YouTube. I, I feel funny when I'm recording, hey? Like... It feels very weird when I'm recording and I'm talking by myself when I'm recording. But I love the energy here on um, Instagram Live. So, yeah. Anyway, let me go back to what I, I, I was going to tell you about today. Well, moving forward for the month of February. I'm going to be reading from titles that have love in them. Um, I'm going to be reading from any any book that has love in it because February is the month of love you know obviously so for the next Fridays hello hello Dibuing hello everybody hi Smule let us pray for good sound and signal for the rest of the reading um, I'm reading uh, from living loving and lying awake at night by Me Sindire Magona Magona or Magona. I think it's Magona. I call her Sindhu Magona. Anyway, that is what I'm reading from. It's short stories. I'm going to read the back. No, I'm not going to read the back of the book. I'm going to read what the book is about from Goodreads. Excited for the month of love. Yeah. I mean, I've got a whole stack of books that have love or loving or anything to do with love on the, on the cover. Or on the title um and i think i'm gonna do like a little picture that i'll post but yeah that's what i'm doing for the month of love because i love love i don't know about you guys but i am team love i yeah i i love peace i love love i love happiness i love everything that comes with love so yes this is i'm gonna read the 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 blurb well the book description from goodreads um and yeah and then we'll start with the reading or we'll start with a story that i think i just paged through i haven't read the book i bought it at book circle capital uh i think two a year ago no last year oh no last year september um oh it was just after the lockdown went to level one or something or level three i don't remember and then we were able to go to the we were able to go to the bookshops and start buying and yeah okay from from the village from the village mother leaving her children to work the maid in service to the white madam the black child raped and murdered living loving and lying awake at night is at once tragic triumphant humorous and sharp but above all forcefully empowering this series is designed to bring to north american readers their once unheard voices of writers who have achieved wide wide acclaim at home but are not recognized beyond the borders of their native lands and with special emphasis on women writers interlinks emerging right emerging voices series publishes the best of worlds contemporary literature in translation or original english so i think the version that i'm reading off of from um goodreads was a different cover but this is the one i have 
and the the one that is described on uh, Goodreads is a different one. Hi, hello, everybody. So I'm reading from something that I decided to read from a book that is um, like too out there because when I first read it, when I first saw it at um, Book Circle Capital, sorry, I thought, hmm, I haven't, I haven't seen anything of, of Miss Indue's work besides what I have on my desk, which is, on my bookshelf, sorry. I have Beauty's Gift, which is, um, which I loved when I first read it so long ago. I think I read it like 2009, somewhere there, but it, it, once I read it, I actually was suggesting it to people. I ended up covering the book because I was borrowing it out so many times to different people. Um, so when I saw this, I was like, okay, great. This is like, I mean, so I'm going to read, um, what, who quarterly black review of books, what quarterly black review of books says about this book. Cindy Magona's living, loving and lying awake at night rips away apartheid shroud, which hovers over lives loves and losses of South African women with a ferocity that is both startling and enlightening. It is a riveting look at the triumph of will and spirit in the face of apartheid's dehumanization. Maguna has given us endearing characters and probing stories that are as author authoritative as they are unforgettable. Um, yeah, and I think this book, oh yeah, this collection of superb short stories was voted one of Africa's 100 best books. So, Simule, what, what is Simule laughing at? Simule, what are you laughing at? Um, uh, okay, let me see the comments. A happy new year. First stream for me this year. Hey, thank you for coming. Thank you for joining. Hello, redeem uh, underscore DM. Nobuti says, I need to read this. I'm teaching her other novel and this would make for great enrichment. Which other novel are you teaching? Uh, best teacher of the year goes to Nobuti. Guys, Nobuti does the things. Simule, let me know what are you, what are you laughing at? I wonder. Are you laughing at the, 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 the ugh, anyway. Okay. So Cosmopolitan UK says, living, loving and lying awake at night confirms her ability to speak on behalf of African women with an acuity, hmm. acuity that is frequently very funny. I'm gonna check that that word. Acuity that is frequently very funny, often achingly sad. Magona's rendition of the tragic comedy of the lives of disadvantaged South African women is so sharply done, one can almost believe it's all fiction. And like, yeah. Mother to Mother. Oh, yes. Okay. I haven't, I don't have that book, actually. I've seen it on loot. I think it is on my, you know, my wish list. Eh, my wish list, guys. It's ever growing. Anyway, what are you guys reading? Please let me know what you guys are reading in the comments for February. I actually have a video that I'm downloading now that I'm supposed to be uploading onto YouTube of my um, February possibilities. I don't want to, yeah my yeah i'm gonna load a, a video during the weekend on my youtube channel so you better please <laughs> i'm joking i'm not threatening you but please um subscribe to my channel because i'm starting to um load more content except the these live readings um i'm i'm trying to record every every week um hi anna Lile. hello so this is living loving and lying awake at night so now that you guys have an idea of what the stories are about because it's short stories actually on the contents page it's part one there's part one and part two part one is women at work and part two is and other stories so the 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 names, some of the, the the stories on part one women at work are, are are like women's names it's people's names like atini stella sheila sophie virginia joyce lillian atini's reflections um and then i am going to be reading from atini's reflections 
or should I? No, I was reading something else. Sorry, guys. I'm going to read from the beginning. I love reading from the beginning, I think. <clears throat> so I'm going to be reading Leaving is the title of the story that I'm going to be reading. Okay. It was right at the time of night when dreams glue eyelids tight and spirits, good and evil, ride the air when lovers stir, the fire spent once more rekindled and the souls of the chosen sigh as they leave the flesh homeward bound. A woman lay wide eyed on her grass mat on the floor of a tiny round mud hut. She was tired, spent, body and mind. The tiredness of her mind and body and heart came together as one. It robbed her of sleep. It forced her to relive the day just pa past, the day she feared and knew she never wanted to see again. But fight against it as she did, the day kept painting itself in her mind's eye, over and over and over. It kept pulling her back to itself and away from sleep and forgetfulness. Eyelids sealed, she saw it all trapped unless as always yesterday she had been up with the first bird song long before morning broke her day started she had crept away from her mat not to wake the baby still sleeping fear fear filled she went to the cardboard box where she kept food enough mealy meal for today's morning porridge if she made it really thin used as little mealy meal as possible she could save some for the next day perhaps but maybe it would not be enough even so getting up she had not put the baby to the breast that was drying up better to spread it over the day taking kindle she went outside and started a fire wood from the fagot next to the hut was her fuel by the time the children woke, the three-legged pot was boiling steadily away and the morning's nourishment was readying. Soon the children, content, were happily at play or those old enough doing their little chores. The woman had fed the baby, put her on her back and then had gathered cow dung from the nearby field where the cattle grazed. On her bared knees, skirt girded high, the basin of cow dung next to her, she set to work. A scoop or two from the basin thwacks thwacks onto the floor, left hand steadying her, the right like a knife spreads peanut butter on a slice of bread or a builder's spatula, cement on a brick, slowly and evenly sweeping the dung across the floor long whirls painted by her hand painted wet green the color of fresh cow dung one bit of floor at a time until the whole floor was smeared she spread her love through her fingers dung and water and her tears mingling in her offering seeping through her fingers as it spread sending its scent up her nostrils okay hold on um hi kumo side note you joined the national day of tea could not resist could not resist oh yes i'm having tea uh hello okay so Kristen says reading blonde indian by ernestine hayes triangulum by masande nchangu this book is anti-racist <laughs> anti-racist by tiffany jory and love and oh you're reading love in color you're reading a lot of books oh for the month of february okay i just remembered now i asked what are you reading for the month probably need to read the book you are in oh okay i i think this is a perfect description of what women back then went through um so like now it's it's describing her la her labor of love in her um and her covering the 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 is it the floors the floors with with mud with cow dung that is like um 
That's like love for her. I mean, it just said here, um, where is it? One bit of flour at a time until the whole flour was smeared. She spread her love through her fingers, dung and water and her tears mingling in her offering, seeping through her fingers as it spread, send, as it, it spread, sending its scent up her nostrils. Then she went to the river. The pail swinging at her side sang its song of emptiness. The wind playing in its dry throat, returning, it stood silent on her head, filled with life from the river. It was content and thus made no noise. Neither did the baby asleep on the woman's back. She had been fed and knew nothing of her mother's anxiety that her breasts were drying. The mother feared for her little one's life. Two cups of mealy meal, two breasts that were drying up, an old hen that had stopped laying eggs, an empty crawl from which she could no longer find even dry cow dung to use in making a fire. So long had it held no cattle and five children who daily needed feeding. These were the thoughts that traveled with the woman on her way to and from the river and stayed with her the whole day through. Now, as she lay awake, these same thoughts stole her sleep, stole her forgetfulness, robbed her of what little peace should have been hers in the middle of the night. Gather berries from the forest, but autumn is a stingy season. Pluck umfino, wild spinach, from the field, if sheep and goats had overlooked any. Dig the same field for roots, if you can beat the witch doctor to it. She had spent the day thinking of ways out of her quandary. Now, in the middle of the night, the bothersome problem refused to surrender her to sleep and rest. Weak, etiolated, light flickered ineffectually at the far end of the room, and the naked floor that gleamed from the smearing of that day stood an old small tin that once, long ago, had contained jam or condensed milk or some other such. Through a hole in its lid, a dirty paraffin-sodden rag sprouted, and it was from this contraption that a frail light made its valiant but vain attempt at splintering the dense dark of the room. The woman, who wasn't quite thirty yet, slept in this little hut with her five children. She had been made a wife at a tender age, for that was the thing to do in those days, and each time her husband returned from the gold mines in Johannesburg, where he worked for eleven months a year, she was soon with child. Had all her pregnancies come to fruition, and had none of her babies died in infancy, there would have been perhaps more than double that number. This moonless night, her mind kept turning and turning, asking itself questions the owner had never heard asked of anyone before. Questions that both frightened her and left her feeling light, light as the down of a new hatched chick. If I leave, thought the woman, who will look after my children? Who will cook for them? And if one should be sick, what will happen? Before the answer came to her, other questions thrust themselves into her mind, burning it with their urgency. If I stay here with them, what shall we eat? If one of them should take sick, what shall I do? What is to become of us if I do not go? Her husband was not one to remember his wife once he was in the gold mines of Johannesburg. As years went by, the woman had come to realize this about him, and although she loved him, still she had slowly come to accept that, unlike husbands of most women in the village, her husband would never be a provider. Not to her, not to his children. He didn't even give his mother support. And that was, indeed, something, for in his own fashion he loved his mother greatly. 
Some would say inordinately so, in fact. That night, the mind of the woman told her, you only have a husband when his body can lie next to yours and his stick pushes up your thighs. We have all these children, said the woman to herself, one of each time he has come back from the mines. But even that doesn't give my husband a heart. As soon as he leaves, he forgets all about us. We have all these children said, oh, sorry, and I, was, I, I skipped. Guys, this is sad, but in the barely lit room, the mother could discern darker shapes on the floor, her sleeping children oblivious to the battle raging in her mind, in her heart. Somewhere in the middle of the room, she heard a moan and knew it was Sizwe, the one after whom the baby came. How she could tell them apart, not just their faces, but even their coughs, their laughs, and the way each turned himself or herself at night on their little grass mats. But then she thought, if I couldn't do that, I would not be a mother. If I couldn't do that, I would not be a mother. I would not, not, would not be a mother. If I could not do that, that's it, screamed her brain, alerted to possibility. That's it. That is it. It, it said, it said it as if it had stumbled on a gold nugget or a cool pool of sweet, clear water in the middle of a vast d desert. A find, salvation. Her heart leaped. She had found the key. I will not be a mother that way. She would fulfill her obligations as she understood them and provide for them. The only way she could be a mother to her children, she saw, would be to leave them. With the stealth of a cat about to miss, she moved. She did not want to waken any of them. With a pang, she thought of Nama Kwezi, her eldest, who slept like a hen one eye open, foot ready to leap to wakefulness. Noma Kwezi was the most likely to awaken if her movements were, were but little louder than those of a mouse. She had got under her, her thin blanket, fully clothed. Now, hand slid beneath the flannel petticoat she wore and reached up to her waist. There it was, confirmed her touch, fingers rubbed, closing around the lump in her in the crude money belt made from a strip from an old pinafore there it was she could she rose and stood still and straight as a reed on her mat while her thoughts galloped away pulling her blanket around her she walked towards the door slowly carefully and with heavy heart she opened the door and stepped out so that was leaving so that is um the first story my take on it is her her showing that she loves her children uh, is her making the hard decision of actually leaving them to go and find work or food for them because there's no more food so and she keeps on getting like being awake at night because of the worry um let me read the comments that was um kumo hello kumo kumo says love mom cindy way such an inspiration she is such a beautiful writer even beauty's gift when i first read it all those years ago like i could not believe like i could see our mothers, our sisters, our aunts in these women that are described in Beauty's Gift. It's there. I'm not going to take it out. But yeah, she she's done a stunning um, job with uh, Beauty's Gift as well. And this, I, I feel like, why didn't I read this earlier, you know? Um, but yeah, if you are finding difficulty in reading during during covid maybe try and get like a short story uh, um an anthology onto your collection and yeah 
what a relatable story that's no booty ah oh, right um a mother having to make a very difficult decision to just leave and now you have the oldest who now has to be a mother to her siblings um and that is the reality of south africa even to this day there are child-headed households um where parents die or parents are in the mines or in joburg swallowed by the johannesburg uh search for gold and they never return home and so um or they end up coming here looking for work and they become sick and they don't make it back home or they make it back home dead and they have to be buried and the children are left without parents to take care of them and that is some of the, the stories that are in here so yeah guys that was me uh cindy Wes, um living loving and lying awake at night um let me read me cindy Wes, um bio for for you guys cindy Wes maguna was born in the eastern cape in 1943 and grew up in google to cape town she holds a Master of Science in Organizational Social Work from Columbia University and worked for the United Nations in New York. Her books include two autobiographies, To My Children's Children and Forced to Grow, a short story collection, Push Push, and the novel Mother to Mother, the one that no Nobuti says she has. Um, so yeah, it is very, uh, it's very relatable. Um, Sippy says, hopefully when she finds money, she will return home and not leave her oldest burdened. Exactly. That is the, the sadness and the reality of, of many households um, all across South Africa. This story just made me aware of how connected the two novels I'm teaching my first additional language learners is. Both books focus on the aftermath, aftermath of the gold rush and how it affected generations um yeah yeah nobody you are so right like i i actually wonder the the type of or the kind of stories that will follow um as well during this time or after this time that we're going through i mean it's been almost a year in um lockdown uh like i can't even imagine what 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 some of the communities are going through where there's job losses there's pay cuts there's so many things that are happening currently with 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 this pandemic um people are losing jobs like if you have a job it's like wow you know in this current time so yeah that was um today's uh reading guys this would be a great book to choose um christy or Kristen, Kristen nb says this would be a great book to choose for this month's read the world 21 challenge Ooh, okay please let me know about this challenge um let me just note it down read the world 21 i won't forget so it's read the world 2021 i'm assuming okay um this is yeah i think it, it it's an amazing book it really does deserve this um title of or not title but africa's 100 best books you know um i feel like i want to read i want to bump it up onto my my um okay so there is to my children's children forced to grow push push and other stories and then mother to mother um, those are uh, Miss Indue's, um other works. Maybe you can um, check a uh, book depository. I think book depository uh, ships worldwide. Um, what else? Amazon. Uh, but I got this 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 one at Book Circle Capital in Melville at twenty seven boxes. That's my chosen. Um, I like um, buying from there. And during the lockdown. I, I bought a voucher because during lockdown if you remember the the bookstores were closed in South Africa so the book circle capital asked for um, regular customers to buy uh, vouchers so I, I signed up to buy I, I bought a voucher which I haven't used actually 
when I bought this, I was I went there to actually buy the um, use my voucher, but I ended up not remembering where what voucher number was it. But anyway, I got this and I still have my voucher, so I am able to go back to Book Circle Capital again and go use my voucher. That is how I um, assisted with alleviating the pressures of um, having to still pay rent during, I think Book Circle Capital was still liable to pay rent. I mean, the books were still in the stores, even though, um, but I'm sure the, they worked out something with their landlord. But yeah, this was my little way of, you know, showing support to an independent bookstore. And um, actually speaking of independent bookstores, I got this week I bought I got I didn't buy I won a book but it came through from I got this book The Eyes of the Naked by um Lita Hermanas it's a novel um I got it from Zeb Media so Zeb Media is also another independent book uh book dealer I call them my book dealers um Zeb uh, and Lita the author of this book in the eyes of the naked they, they were running a campaign and if you are watching still and you're from a book club there is another giveaway going on on lita's um page uh i think the his instagram page is the eyes of the naked um that title that's i warned this from the competition that they were running last week yes tippy you got it Tippy says, because books are your drugs. Yes, because books are my drugs. <laughs> um, uh, Nantipa, um, Nantipa is asking, I love Cindy Is this her new book? No, it's not her new book. Um, this book is, the f it was first published in, um, first edition published in 1991. So this one, this uh, this is a, her, the fifth impression so this one was printed in 2019 so this was printed in 2019 but guys can you hear that my children are knocking sorry my girl cat okay <laughs> i have to go yeah it's too long now let me see i'm deaf to stealing that concept uh definitely going to check out Lita's book yeah so guys um if you are part of a book club um don't forget enter this competition um uh, there's a book uh, there's a book 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 club um competition running on his page they want to join the chat I know right like guys eyes of the naked one of the best books I've read says Jimmy really thumbs up mommy okay guys i'll see you next week um i hope you have a great reading weekend and what else please if you're not subscribing onto my youtube channel it's bukamoso book club i keep all the socials the same name bukamoso book club uh on youtube please subscribe Doch. subscribe and then you will encourage me to like keep shooting and feeling funny when i'm recording all by myself here it's so weird having to record guys I don't know how everybody does it. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Woo! Ha! <laughs> it's so weird talking to yourself. But anyway, uh, for those who have just joined, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. But you're late. It's almost 40 minutes. Actually, 40 minutes after the fact. I've just finished reading from Living, Loving and Lying Awake at Night by Miss Indiwe Makuna. Um, her book is available at all good bookstores this is the fifth impression of this book it was published in 1991 and it is part of africa's 100 best books guys guys so okay let me go attend to my daughter twin two is not happy right now uh, i have to go um thank you guys for joining me um okay yeah i will load it up on youtube it's gonna be so long um I actually need to come up with a, a time for, for for these lives, maybe 20 minutes. Then I record everything f like for YouTube. Uh, I think I want to keep it max 20 minutes because then it takes longer to download and stuff. So yeah, happy Friday, you guys. Happy Friday. I hope you're smiling through this gray weather. Like today, at least we got one hour of sunshine. 
somehow but yo i don't know what's going on with the weather but yeah apparently there's another week of this left so we'll see i'll see you guys next week friday on the what what is it it'll be the 12th of february yay it's uh, it's valentine's weekend so i'll see you next week with another title with love in the the title or the description on the cover for the whole month i'll be reading from love i'm i'm putting it out there i don't have i think i've read most of the books that are in that have love but yeah not all of us are in gray weather conditions Ooh, tippy where you at girl <gasps> Okay, so Tulu, sorry. Okay, guys, I will save it on IGTV, but I won't save it for too long. I'll download it and then I'll add everything on YouTube. Um, I want to start loading everything on YouTube instead. But yeah, I will see you guys next week, Friday. Bye. Ah, you guys, you're so late. All of you. Nami, Fifi, Tulu. Like, bye, -bye. Ah, Five o'clock, we start every Friday. Five o'clock. I love you guys. I'll see you next week. <laughs>